Listen, if you're a fan of the Sly Guy podcast and you want more slyness in your week, you want additional episodes, you want the extra Sly Guy podcast, you want guest stuff, you want the library of previous podcast material, you can get that at www.patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast. For as little as £2 a month, you support this podcast, you help me increase the standard of guests, the standard of production, the standard of everything. And also you get loads of nice, fun stuff as well. So just go to patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast and subscribe today. The Sly Guy Podcast is always brought to you in association with Modest Beer. From day one, they've been with us. And I love Modest and Modest love you. And to say thank you for Modest supporting the podcast and to give you, the listeners, a little bit of something back, Modest are now offering 15% off when you use my code SLYPA15 at checkout. That's right. Go to www.modestbeer.co.uk. Check out what they've got there. They've got merch there. They've got beer there. They've whatever you want that's Modest related at their website, modestbeer.co.uk. When you go there, use the checkout SLYPA15 and you get 15% off just for being a Sly Hard. Thank you and thank Modest. Get it in the I'm the Sly Guy. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Sly Guy Podcast with me, Dave Elliott. Guys, listen, first things first, thank you very much for bearing with me. It's been a tough couple of weeks over at Elliot Towers. You know, we've had some stuff going on family-wise. You know, we've had a wee bereavement in the family. It's been a tough time. So last week, the podcast wasn't out as usual. and We publicly released a tremendous Patreon episode that we did with Vittorio Angeloni. So again, you still got some content, but it wasn't you know, the regular podcast. But I appreciate everybody who's been checking it out to make sure that we're all okay, we're all good, yeah. Things just, you know, that's, that's life. And sometimes, you know, as much as you love doing podcasts and as much as you love um, the, the, the feedback, the reaction, the, 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 the way people enjoy listening to the podcast, sometimes you just can't do them. Life takes over. Unfortunately, that has happened um, over the last couple of weeks. But it's okay because I'm back. And what a fun episode this was. My guest this week is one line, line, one liner comedian extraordinaire. That was easy for me to say. I f- it feels like I've had one line of something entirely different. But it's one liner comedian and friend of mine, friend of the show, Johnny Bo. And it was a, I mean, it was a weird episode. We spoke about his process, the difference between being a regular kind of bit comedian and. Um, being a one-liner comedian, the process of coming up with jokes, writing jokes, things like that. We also talked about the um, Sigmund Freud Oedipus theory at, at great great length. To be fair, I, I know too much about that than I really should, and other unorthodox ways of closing shows and earning money. So, you know, if that interests you, check it out. You'll have a great time. And if it doesn't, hey ho, I don't give a fuck. You know, it's one of those things. If it doesn't interest you, just don't listen, guys. That was a bit negative way to start, wasn't it? But it doesn't matter. We're back. We're feeling good. And onwards and upwards. And enjoy this week's episode of the Sly Guy Podcast with Johnny Bo. <coughs> By the way, I don't have COVID, so don't worry. Come on. That's all right. Not that it matters if you've got COVID anymore anyway. You know. I don't think anything I don't think anything really matters anymore, does it? <laughs> oh, wow. What a, what a deep start. Are we going? We're do you want to re- reiterate that? Just do you want to say what you... Just that nothing really matters anymore in terms of like, like we could be, we could have started this by kissing them, would have been fine. Yeah, Johnny Bowes in the Slack Guy podcast. There we go. Nothing really matters. You know what I'm going to say? I just want to apologize for everybody, first and foremost, off the bat that I'm wearing a hat because um, I'm bald now, but I haven't had a, a tight shave in a while. So I look like I'm trying oh, to. Oh, was it? Can I see? Yeah, it's bad. It's not the worst thing. I've, but I've, you know I've what? Worse. What happened? Um, the patrons will know, but. Regular folk mind. I lost uh, a great aunt of mine. It was very sad, and one of her like dying wishes was that I didn't look as quote harsh on her funeral as I did. So I went, "What does that entail? Not looking so harsh?" And she went, "Could you grow your hair back?" I'm like, "Well, I mean, if I could, that's you know, I, mean, that's I would." I was like, "Could you walk again?" And she'd be <laughs> like, "Well, obviously not." I'm like, "Well, there you go." But um, yeah, that was, so that was her. That's a weird make a wish. <laughs> I know. So that was her last. But you know what? There was a couple of things that she wanted done like one was um there's a guy from her church who was overseeing the the funeral and she was like you don't drink alcohol and he's there and he came for like the dinner afterwards and stuff that's great and my dad was like 
<laughs> and he's gonna go <laughs> parched here, you know. But no, it was so yeah. I grew my hair a bit, and I went to my barber who knows I've got no hair, and I was like, "Can you do something here?" I'd <laughs> be worried if he did, not you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, fair. <laughs> but he was like, can, "I said, can you do something?" And he was like, mm. "I'll try." And he tried, but now it's like microphone bald head. So mm. I need to get cut again. So I've got the hat. Do you feel like you're focusing more on the beard now? Because I feel like I, that I'm I'm thinning on top a little bit, mm. but I feel like. Do I just go mental with the beard whenever? Like, I've literally just had a fresh trim, like, so yeah. that's why I'm tardy. But. No, it looks tight. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, my beard's kind of always been... But then I look back on old photos, and it's, like, a lot shorter, you know? So, mm. I just don't know. I don't think I really do a lot. I always trim my beard um, mm. on my face and whenever I'm tr- shaving. But I haven't <laughs> even really shaved this, this today. I'm, I'm actually very... And especially in comparison to you today, I look super scruffy. Yeah, well, I have literally just came straight from the barber so. That's, oh that's nice well, well I'm glad you said that because if you'd have just finished it with the first part of that sentence I've literally <laughs> just came a bit oh wow well that too but yeah. well once you took the hat off it <laughs> yeah and like, it, it crawled back inside itself yeah, again yeah. But yeah I don't know it's, it's a weird thing it's a, like fashion style as you get older where you, what you are as a person is an odd thing isn't it like I feel like now I want to ask you this question so mm-hmm. first and foremost congratulations from the last time you are on the podcast you're a wedded man yeah um, and now that's a wedding ring that wasn't like a gangster or something. I know, it's, yeah <laughs> motherfuckers I'm married yeah, eat, eat dick but not mine eat dick eat dick eat dick and not mine but yeah so you're married now do you feel like anything has changed with that in terms of how you view yourself um, well I lost my virginity so that was great nice just on my wedding night nice you on, there, on you? your wedding I was, I was actually in the room you thought Screw that was a lamp? You're like, that's a very, <laughs> very curvaceous lamp in the corner. No. <laughs> and like, what's that little short handle it has about midway down? Don't press it. Do Don't. not press it. No. And no, nothing's, nothing's really different. Just that we're booking shitloads of holidays now. Like. Again, you said booking there. Is, this like, is that a, a weird sort of <laughs> character way to say something else? She doesn't give me a yellow card. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, no, we're just booking flat out the minute. <laughs> yeah, get her booked. Um, right. But yeah, no, we keep booking like... Um, so we went to Ibiza, the quiet part, whenever mm-hmm. we... So that was honeymoon, our first... We've just decided now that every holiday is a honeymoon now. Nice. And We're, what's the difference between, in your opinion, as a married guy now, mm, between a regular holiday and a honeymoon? You just try and get free shit when you're on honeymoon. Nice. So it's a ploy. I like that. Yeah, 100%. Like, it's literally every... Every hour you go, like, you go to the shop just to back up with balls of water. Yeah. It's our honeymoon. Nice. And what do you get thrown in there? A couple of, like, rollies? Literally yeah, nothing. Papers, nothing. Literally, literally. Yeah, yeah, we got some rollies, but we don't smoke. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've just Listen, I, I know a guy, I'll sort you out. But no, it's, it, yeah. I, li- I, like the, I like the thought behind it, but do you, are you still in that period of, well, the, do you still feel like... The honeymoon period? Yeah. You were trying to say I was trying to say that, something yeah. different, but I mean, it, it, it's mm. literally, again, people, I've been off for a couple of weeks and it tells, like, it tells, it tells, you can tell, my, I can't even put words together. It does, it does tell. Yeah, shit, I need to get back in the, <laughs> I need to be bald, that's what it is, I'm the reverse Samson, I need to be bald <laughs> to have all my power again. But so you're married, you sit, like, so what What did change? Did you do anything different or you just? Uh, spent, spent a lot of money, like a lot of money mm-hmm. on the wedding, and then... At a massive party, there's video of you dancing like proper play, properly put in shapes. Like yeah. I put in for some very like I didn't even know these shapes existed. Nothing. Which was which was phenomenal. Sometimes I was, whenever I lose it in the moment, mm-hmm. I actually almost am otherworldly. Yeah. In how I deliver my pro- and like at your wedding, I I, I ended up being quite pretty wrote off actually. Were you we drinking before? Well, I had a couple of pints before because yeah. I was I was uh, working later in the day. I mean, being a, being a radio professional, you know what's like. And I was out of work relatively late, so it was rel- it was too late to make the day part, but too mm. early to come make dinner. Yeah, you know, sure so that in I was sort of in the purgatory, then the wedding purgatory. So <laughs> since it was in my neck of the woods, speaking off, what a, well, I mean, the man master of puns and a pull this Rory, w- Rory Woods. I keep calling him Rory, and that's not his name. Mm. Rory Woods and Mick Bartlett came to Bangor. We had a few pints, got dropped to the wedding, and great, great. had a good time. And by this time, the time we got there, mm. people weren't weren't tight. People were loose. Oh, it was very loose. Like yeah. it was, it was a part. Of, that's what we wanted. though, a proper just a just a party. Yeah. I was pretty gone by the time you got there. Like everyone says, you can't get drunk at your wedding. It's like, oh, you're too busy talking. But no, mm. I got drunk. And did you? Was there a way? Did you? Like so, say you're right. You're married. Okay, yep. you do the ceremony. Mm-hmm. All good. You love in life. Mm. Did you have a, a a period of time with you and 
I don't know if you're happy with me using your wife's <laughs> name. What did you say with your wife? Did you I don't know have, why I just started calling her. I know you're like, yeah, don't, don't say her name. Because I know sometimes, like, I've mentioned other people's names. For example, Shane's kids. He doesn't like me mentioning them. So don't, I won't, I won't, either. <coughs> yeah, but did you have a period where, like, you went the two of you off somewhere privately for a wee bit? Or were you just straight <coughs> into the crowds? No, we had a wee brief period where we were, like, upstairs. Just chilling, sort of, mm-hmm. and that's when I lost my virginity. <laughs> 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 yeah, to myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, she was. Standing she was there. down. She was down at the bar. Disgusted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And, and in that moment, did you did it did it hit you? The, like the fact you're like, oh fuck, this is yeah, it's over for me. But now? it's it is such like the whole day is like. A, I don't know if it's because there's so much going on or because I drank a lot, but it, it was literally a blur. Mm-hmm. Like there was things the next day where Victoria was talking about it, and I was like. So you can't say her name with this week? Oh yeah, no, I can't. Yeah, 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 I think so anyway. Yeah, no, everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Does she have a middle name? Victoria? Victoria Samantha. Turner. Yeah. If anyone's looking, stalking or finding. Yeah. Well, she's all over my page, so it's quite easy to find. Yeah. And, and I mean... That's another you, thing. I'm going to bring this up. Yeah. I guess I know I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring this up because this is quite... This is, this is a slight tangent. Uh-huh. But um, some guy sent her a message not that long ago mm-hmm. through my work basically saying um what was it it was something like um hey looking good um hope you're keeping well um blah 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 sort of like thing like from your work or no it was through it was like oh i seen you on i mean my work uh-huh. page um i got i got your instagram through there a message basically saying like hey like looking good sort of thing hope you're keeping well blah 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 uh-huh. and then me x at the end and she sent a screenshot to me and what the fuck uh-huh. Like that's weird, isn't it? That's that's, that's not so me being weird. Did it look like your work, the business page of your work? But he just found her profile through. He just said he ah, found so it's it through nothing, there. Nothing to do with your work. Well, what I'm thinking is uh-huh. the only thing that happened there recently where I was on it. I don't know if you've seen the photo, but Mickey bought a yes. suit from us for my for oh. literally for my wedding. And I was there with him when he came. Yeah, that oh yeah, day, yeah. So you were there the first day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is my yeah. fault. Yeah, is this what we're this is your fault? Yeah, this is your fault. fault. So then I was tagged in that photo. Mm-hmm. Me and Mickey outside him buying the suit. So I'm thinking he must have clicked on my profile and been like, uh-huh. oh, there's his... There's his... <laughs> Number one squeeze. There's yeah. his future wife. I'm going to message her and say... Like, <coughs> like, that's weird. And was he... Is he someone you know? No. No? Someone... It's someone who are... People in my work know. Mm-hmm. But that's weird. That's, Did I know this person? Uh... I don't know. I'll show you after. I'd be keen to find out. I'm. I'm curious. You might actually. You might. Yeah, but I don't know this person. I didn't know who this person yeah, was. Yeah, that's definitely weird. But that's a ga- That's that's a really weird thing that men do uh-huh. in terms of like because that's quite because we're not like very. Some people are quite secret. I mean, I say secret about the relationship. I mean, like they just don't post it. Yeah. But we post. Like, yeah. Everything. Like, and I, the only way you could have gone to her profile was through mine. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Well, I mean, listen. This now we're talking about this. I'll just I'll just pop my my hat up a wee bit. There's a guy out there who is is a he's not a, a nemesis of mine. Let's not be fair, but I'm not really fond of him. Okay. There you know, mm-hmm. was this guy. He's uh he's not not a comedian. You know, mm-hmm. he's involved in other aspects of, of, of media. Yeah, he's he's a, full, he's a leader of the YCV. <laughs> he's the young citizen volunteer leader, which is, which is embarrassing for me because they are the youth wing of the UVF. So yeah, he's a child, a, yeah, you know. Beef for the child. Yeah, I have a beef beef for the child, and especially as a comedian in this mm. day and age, to say you've got beef with anyone, let alone a child, is problematic. That's but um, <laughs> but there could be no beef between me and any children. Let me just yeah, put that out there. No child beef. But this guy, we had a bit of beef in terms of. I did a. You weren't out for dinner, anyway. Right? <laughs> no, we weren't at Dean's. <laughs> right, okay, right, right, no. right, right, right. I, I, I was on a radio show and mm. basically said something that he interpreted as being offensive, which wasn't totally b- BS. And he just read me the riot act, basically cut the radio off and was like, "You can't say it. This is live radio. This is a disgrace." And all. I was like, at the time, I was, pr- it was probably like it was for my my second ever show, so that was maybe what like was it a few years ago. Like, yeah, about five years ago probably. Yeah, so like okay. halfway through my journey, and yeah, it was five years ago because Holly's coming six, right. and I did the dad show just after she was born. Okay. So then, yeah, well, so you go back then, I, I was probably a bit more of a novice, maybe not entirely did you say like, novice, right, novice, yeah, yeah. No, novice. And, I, <laughs> sorry, sorry. and I and I wasn't like you know I didn't have the I didn't have my dad's strength fully set in. I didn't have I'm a full grown man syndrome. Mm. So like if I'd have been nine, he'd have said that. I'd have said you know what you can do fuck off 
you know, yeah. don't don't ever fucking read the act like me like that. Yeah. Especially when I walked in in the radio station and you just sat there like an ignorant bastard and didn't even introduce yourself and just went we're on air. Fuck you. That's I don't, you know? I don't like that. But then that was fine. So I was like, that's okay. He unfollowed me on social media. I hadn't followed him in the first place. Whatever. And then randomly he just follows Catherine. That's see, that's weird. But she she's like uh because her profile's private. Uh, she's he, just accept. He must have yeah, so he must have followed her and again why would he he doesn't know her at all so is he just following her to see what I'm up to and you know what the funny thing was he was like this is live radio you know nothing about live radio blah blah and guess what guy hosts live radio now so you know what actual radio presenter so you know what that means you know what I like to do I like to and this is I think important to listeners and people in general Mm -hmm. when people are like if someone slights you so this guy right Mm -hmm. he's obviously annoyed you here quite rightly so he's out of order you could either go ox water off a duck's back, which I think you should do on the face of it, because mm. in this I was like, I don't care what this guy does or says. Yeah, yeah. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, long runs of the fox. One day vengeance will be mine. So just keep that in your mind. I you know? Next time like, he's in the shop. <laughs> next time he's in the shop, be like, here. In fact, what you should do, <laughs> get some photos of from your honeymoon, two years together, and you should be like, here. Do you like this? Do you like this photo, Mama? Do you think she's looking good in this? Do you? Yeah. Do you like that? Do, that? do you? And then she'd be like, oh, okay, well. If you if and then, and then he might just mug you and be like, oh yeah, she looks a cracker there, bro. And then he be, and then, yeah, and then I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, listen, well done. Mm. I mean, <laughs> this is totally the wrong <laughs> phrase, but you know when to, <laughs> when you get a new outfit and like your granny or someone will be like, health to wear. Imagine he said that to you, health to wear, man. Well done, your wife's beautiful. You'd be so proud. Then you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm a dick myself. Health to hell. That's that, that is a strange yeah. phrase to describe my wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> health to wear. You know. Yeah. But in that instance, good luck yeah. wearing your wife. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, there's there's two ways you could take that. You could take it in the vulgar mm. sense, yeah. or you could take it in the Ed Gain sort of sense. <laughs> Either way, you know. She she does. Yeah, she does like her serial killers. Like, but yeah, you're so also a guy who has the contacts to genuinely make suits out of human flesh. Oh yeah, a guy once asked me for a vegan suit. A vegan suit? Genuinely, he asked me for a vegan suit, and I. My first thought was I really wanted to respond. I say all our suits are made from one hundred percent beef. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't say that. Yeah. Um, but it turns out it's just a suit that doesn't have any boil in it. Yeah, because we'll say slider Lady Gaga. She's like, well, not yeah, yeah, that's literally like, yeah. He would just be like, have you anything different? <laughs> that's like, I mean, yeah. so that's a bit weird, isn't it? A vegan. It suit. is weird because it's just it's not like you're we're not you're not wearing the fucking intestines as a belt or anything like it's. Because <laughs> like I something yeah. like, speaking of Ed Gein, like you're aware of the, mm. his case. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And your wife's a fan of serial killers, like yeah, like big, big fan, strange, like yeah, it's like, problematic. Oh, you a little bit. My wife was reading a book the other like the other month, and it was I didn't like she's a big an avid reader. Mm. That's what happens. There's there's reading goes on in our bed, but not mm. a word similar to it. Like if you're dyslexic and you go, there's a lot of reading going on in my bed. And you read that, <laughs> no. you go, oh, fair play, the big lad. Yeah, but no, <laughs> you're not who fancy a read. No, it's like quite literally when she's licking her, <laughs> she's like licking her, her <laughs> thumb and hands and fingers in my bed. It's to turn pages and uh, nothing else. <laughs> but um, she's so the way we lie in our bed. She wanted the bed to be big. And I was like, oh, why? So, you know, it's you know, there's lots of room for activities. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, so as whenever I reach across, I can't, don't touch you. And I went, ah, oh, it makes me feel amazing. <laughs> that's so, so it's beautiful. That's so she was lying there reading a book one day. So the way she would reach, would pl- pop up, my, again, my pillow. I have three pillows I sleep with. I have one, which is like quite a, I, I'm not a, I don't like a feather pillow. I like a, I like a, a firm foam same, pillow. Same, same, same. So like quite a thickish firm one mm-hmm. at the bottom then a thinner firm one that I can kind of manoeuvre a bit in position then I have a very soft one that I kind of just like puff my arm over and choke out right yeah I need that I need that side one yeah you, you have to yes. yeah. <laughs> and do you do it like that yeah I do it like this because again I think it's my way of showing her that if she fucking steps out of line this could be, this could she's be. in trouble yeah, you, know? you, could, you could be the third pillow <laughs> yeah I could be like <laughs> some of that but she uses my third pillow to rest her book on when she's reading so if I'm in bed, maybe on the laptop or something, and like I look across, it's just the book right in my face. Eye. And the particular book that I found quite perturbing was a book called How to Kill Your Family. That's disturbing. Yeah, so I was just lying there. Well, that's you, because that's you. It's me and my two kids. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like that's I'm a dog. Probably would be included in that too. And I mean, God love. Yeah. And he's so white that if you know, be the thought of any. Oh, turns yeah. But um, yeah, so she was reading that, and it was just. It was weird. So that wasn't the worry with that. But in terms of, of serial killer, I had this mm. thought that, you know, obviously Ed Gein gets a bad rap. For, for those of you who don't know, he is, uh, I mean, he was a serial killer, wasn't he? I mean, I, I don't even know. The, the term serial killer, I don't know if you know, this is being kind of redefined a wee bit now. They're, mm. they're classing 
two kills with, oh, a, really? with a, as a serial killer now apparently what if you kill what do they have to be apart or if you just yeah you have, you i think kill? there needs to be a cooling off period because then like say you are like yeah. the it's like you have to wait for it to reset before you go again. yeah because you need to be like yeah because like if you're like a spree killer if you go and like do like anders breivik shot up that oh yeah, yeah, toya, yeah he killed like 70 people gross but he did that all in one go so sort of like spree killing you know i hope you'd be raging if he actually his aspirations were to be a serial killer yeah and he's like fuck he's got carried away he's like, fuck yeah <laughs> he's like i would have done more except the kind of you know I got scooped after. There was killed. absolutely no cooling off no, period there. No, it, like to use the phrase <laughs> "chill out, Anders," it would have been an understatement. <laughs> yeah. But so he again to me, I I think it's like he's always considered one of the, like the most n- known serial killers. Yeah. But I think he only killed one person, didn't he? Right. Or else two. Like he sure, shot a, lo- a local shop owner, and then mm-hmm. what he did, I mean, which is much more sound, is he just dug up freshly buried bodies and made. So, suits and stuff on him, you know. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah, from Plainfields, Wisconsin. That's where uh, Ed Gaines from, yeah. and he was a wee bit of you know. I don't know what the terms now, because again, this is what I think is a problem. I'm a guy who grew up in the late nineties, mm. the nineties. I'm maybe not akin to know what the, the the turn of phrases to use nowadays is mm. for someone like that. To me, I would have described Ed Gaines as someone with a bit of a want about him. He had issues, like problems. Yeah. Because whenever the poli- like police called to the house, someone had been reported missing. Called the house, he had them hung up in his barn by the, th- the ankles and he had cut them down the middle like from the the taint to the breastbone which right that's yeah I mean it's unorthodox it's it's not I've never seen that before or since yeah no I and, 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 and I mean it would be quite a sight to behold I'm sure if you're the, the respondent officers yeah but then they got there and they found a lot of other stuff like he had gloves made out of skin and he had a belt made out of nipples do you think they fit well I don't know. This is why I'm gonna say to you here, like, because to me, people are like, "Oh, Gene's a perv and all and he's this." Mm-hmm. I just think that maybe he is a like a, a fa- like a fashion designer. I was maybe. gonna say that's that's quite modern. Like, there's a lot of people nowadays, you know, shopping in charity shops mm-hmm. and they're sort of going against fast fashion. Yeah, like that's what he was doing. Yeah, because he's like, like obviously Edward Enonful has left Vogue as the head editor, so it would have been good to see who's, who's filling in for him and who's. You know, taking over and to just ask their thought on fact because I mean, anything has to st- anything that is the very first thing is a bit odd initially. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, like, if you think of somebody who had oysters for the first time, that's a creep, it's a yeah, freak it's, guy. Yeah, that's weird. They like, oh, this shell with this thing that looks like snot in it, yeah, almost gives me a boner. You know, that's a weird <laughs> that thing. quick. Is yeah. it, is it, I've never see, I've never tried them. Is it that quick? No, because I mean, I had oysters when I was in Carlingford with my mates. And I didn't want to buck any of them. <laughs> just hear it under the table. Just dump, yeah, dump, just dump, <laughs> dump, 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 dump. The table's like a magic <laughs> carpet. It's like, I don't know what's going on here. But, yeah, I, 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 I don't... And, and this is the thing, too. I think society... And again, mm. this is back... This is deep. We're going deep here. Mm. Society can kind of, you know, make people do weird things. Yeah. For example, you know, eat oysters. Like, is that really... Are they really that nice? They're fine, I would say. Caviar, I, are they... Is it that nice? No, it's just a status thing. Mm. You know, but people do it. Prime is the prime example. Do you know? Yeah, I seen it in the shops the other day. I think there's about seven bottles left and absolutely no interest. I was like, yeah, quit or something for it. And you know what? Can't be that nice. I would like to try it, like, but I'm never buying it. It's not going to be nicer than BPM Red. It's not going to be nice than Lucas Aid. Nothing's better than that. No, that's true, actually. Or Red Bull and Vodka. Red Square. That's that's what that's what, that's that's what, nice. that's what eight or nine year old kids. <laughs> imagine, I mean, imagine that's what it was. <laughs> Logan Paul just trolled the world. All these kids yeah. just block. Just <laughs> you wouldn't know. That's the thing. No, but see, this is where we're going now. People are influenced mm. by strange things. The fact that influencers even exist as a term in the world now, like it's literally this is what we're yeah. at. So back to Ed Gein, right? We need yeah. to get past this. I, so, know, I have another question. But continue. But he has the raw materials. Mm-hmm. If he, for example, brought you a hide. You didn't okay. know where the hide came from. Right. Could you get a pretty sweet outfit made out of it? Depending. Like depends, you've seen well, the depends who it is. Depends who it is. If it's me, no. No. Well, I mean, you. What, what would you, you? Could get a snood. Maybe. You could maybe. You could get a glove. I mean. Yeah, you could get one glove. <laughs> you could get one glove. I like fingerless. Me. Fingerless, but. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a pretty badass outfit. Yeah. But with, I think I could clothe the family. I could get a lot of flesh off me. Well. And the hair, the back. It's like a, you know, it's like a coarse boar. <laughs> That's true. You could you could make a winter suit out of you. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, but that's no. I don't know. I don't know if you get that much. But what I was thinking was, do you say you make gloves? Mm-hmm. 
did he make the gloves though, or were they just other people's hands? I mean, no, I, I'm going to go as far as to say I think because a feel like that is like their sort of hands are basically already made gloves. I'm going to look up Ed Gein's gloves here. Um, <laughs> on eBay. Ed Gein gloves, yeah, <laughs> just on Amazon. <laughs> Ed Gein gloves. Because <coughs> you know what? Mm. Yeah, so there they are. They don't look like they're the most fashionable numbers, but they don't look like just pure hands. There's no they nails on They look like it. the gloves that my mum used to put on before she put on her rubber gloves. Is that a thing? Yeah. My oh. mum used to do it all the time. For like, <gasps> doing what? Like she would put on like... Housework? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put these like cotton gloves on before you put the rubber gloves on. So you're not just sticking your hand in the rubber. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, but that's yeah, they look a wee bit like that. But they they, they don't look they they kind of they don't, they don't look like if I someone offered me these I go now nah, you're all right I'll I'll pass. Yeah, they're not the best looking gloves. In no, the they're, hand, not are they? they're not great. They're not great. No, but you could. But you you know people. Oh yeah, no, I know people. I know people mm. that could make a suit out of you. Yeah. Nice and Sweeney Todd, like he made it, you know, pies mm. out of out of flesh, so. You know, I think you should get some high end fashion out of. Would I try a pie? Yeah, depends. Old me would have, I think. Mm. Me if a month ago, yes. Me wow. now that I'm a fitness guy, nah. Yeah, so yeah, now that I'm, um, I'm focused on training and stuff. <laughs> Not yeah. eating human pie. No, but you know what I mean. Well, well, <laughs> well you know, mm. depends how you interpret that. Yeah. Depends how far she is into the book. <laughs> Yeah, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> if she's towards the end and she now has a way to kill the family, then absolutely not. But mm. in fact, maybe that's the time we should be trying that. Probably. You know, that's the time you need to try to bring out all the big guns to try to stop. In fact, imagine mm. that. You see, that that would be saving your family's life to do that in that circumstance. It would be. It would how be. to kill your family. Yeah, well, how to save your family is eight puss. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a big win to happen. Yeah, eight puss <laughs> and live. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Make me come if you want to live, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know about Oedipus? Oedipus uh, was the... That's to do with, is that to do with the mum thing? Yeah, Oedipus bucked his ma. Right, yeah. yeah. That was actually written, wasn't it? Yeah, that was actually... That's the what line. they found, wasn't it? it was, yeah. I believe it was actually scrawled on the on the walls of the ancient Rome. Oh, yeah, Oedipus uh, bucked his on the room of the Roman toilets. Yeah. Yeah. But then I thought, like... Because like, that was actually, you know, the true story, and now this is going to sound ridiculous... But um, do you know? Have you heard of Pompeii? You know the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just the, whenever they excavated the ruins of Pompeii, they found a toilet, and then at the side of the wall it said he just bucked this man. I believe that. And it was it was bad too because the guy who was like encased in the mm. lava and and forever was a guy that was a bit overweight. You can't tell anymore because of the lava had dissolved his entire right. skin and all. But it was just the skeleton that remained. But what it was, he was in a cubicle and he was holding the door shut and he was wiping his arse standing up from behind. So my thought is he was too big to reach his, his hole uh, sitting. Shit. So he had to stand and he didn't want anyone opening the door. So I thought you were saying he was bucking and Oedipus' his ma. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I think Oedipus' no. ma may have topped herself actually, I think, after. I think because there was a whole big thing where it was like a mug off. Do you know what I mean? It's a big murk because basically what happened, this yeah. witch, because you know, way back in the it's day, a car. yeah, it was a big, <laughs> a big murk. But this witch, right, I think was like basically said to Oedipus's ma, like in any like literature guys, like they're Dr. Bartlett, mm. don't be losing any, don't be losing the shit with me about this. But basically, what I think, some witch was like, you're gonna buck your son, and then Oedipus's ma was like, the fuck are you speaking to me like that for? And he goes, ah, oh, you're going to buck your son, though. She's like, I'm not going to buck my son. <laughs> and then, like, the king was like, fuck, her son's my son, you're not going to buck my son. So then, what happened was the son was born, and the king was like... Oh, this is before? Yeah. So he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't no, even he wasn't born, yeah. Right. So they're like, right, you're going to buck your son. She's like, right. So the king was like, now nah, I can't have you bucking your son. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, unfortunately, as much as it's shit for me, we're going to go and put our son in a field and hope the wolves get him. Right. And she went, murdering my son's better than bucking him, in fairness. Let's, you know... Let's get him murdered? Let's get him... Well, no, is it is it murder if you accidentally leave 
your kid in a forest no, it's, full of wolves. It's, it's neglectful parenting at, at worst, I think. Yeah, it's like leaving your child in an apartment in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, what's manslaughter? Yeah. Man's laughter, you know, I think yeah. there's that. And by the way, speaking of that, I was in Portugal holidays this year and I got so scared because we were all in the swimming pool together. Me and the two other, me, my wife and the the other couple that were there were swinging and our kids were in bed in the apartment and I had forgot to cl- like lock the front door and like we were just like the back so you know anything could happen just happened to us yeah well quite literally and you know that w- that was weird so anyway Oedipus you can kill him so leave him in the, in the forest and the wolf but yep. what happens <coughs> is they fuck away off in their chariots or whatever mm-hmm. and then Oedipus um he gives off as a baby he's given off and then like someone hears him this like, is that a fucking baby up there and then they go into the forest and all, and they're like, the loud screams getting louder. And like, there's a, fuck, a fucking baby here. Shit, but we can't fucking leave a baby here. Yeah, there's wolves yeah. in this forest for fuck's sake. Yeah. So then his family from local village take this baby, and they're like, oh, he's a sweet baby. Like, what we'll do is um, we'll keep it as our own, because maybe I think there was something going on there. I think maybe his family couldn't have their own kids. So they, back in the time, were like, it's a gift from God. So mm. they took this guy, yeah, of course. raised him, whatever. I think maybe they called him Oedipus. Which I mean, it's a, it's a it's a foreshadowing name, isn't it's it? It's very yeah, that's that's yeah. impressive. Le- and then he's got a brother called Lekavani. <laughs> <laughs> Dog called Sucker Cock. <laughs> Uncle Sucker Cock. <laughs> but um, so they they raised Oedipus, right? And, I was, and then Oedipus became like a bit of a strapping guy. You know, he's pretty big, pretty buff, pretty strong. Loved to fight back in the Roman times. They loved that. So then, what happened? Fast forward, whatever time, the the king was crossing past this village or whatever and there was some sort of kerfuffle I don't know the ins and outs but there ended up he came across Oedipus which is ironic because the witch predicted it'd be the mum that would do that <laughs> not the dad very good, very good. They, very good. They, bu- they bumped into each other on the yeah. road and there was a, a fight broke out and whatever happened Oedipus killed the king so Oedipus murdered the king who in fact he unbeknownst to him and unbeknownst to the king mm. his dad he killed him now, back in those days that's so annoying isn't it? If you kill the king, mm. you take their shit. What? So you take over their shit, not their actual oh, shit. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, you didn't just eviscerate the shit. shit's coming to me. It's going like a scalping thing or something. No, and then, and then it's <laughs> just all back there. Is it on his head? And could you make a belt out of intestine? No. So <laughs> back to Oedipus. So he yeah. then went back, took a chariot, went back. The servants all brought him back to the, the king. It's like, yeah, he's like, he goes up and there's just the queen. Who, unbeknownst to everyone, Oedipus' ma, mm. he goes, I killed your husband. I, come here now, like, okay. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then he just took up with this the queen and he became the king. See, I didn't know it was like that. I feel like yeah. he gets a lot of stick. He does get a lot of stick because that's that's a mug off. Like. Yeah. So then what happens? He comes in and then he ends up... And then what happens, I think, again, such a fucking piece of shit, yeah. the witch just comes back like 10 years later and it's like, at your missus eye and he goes I he goes ah beardy it's your man <laughs> no, he's I like what you. no he goes and he goes remember I told you fuck your son ah long runs of fuck you bastard and then that's how it happens she's a dick the witch yeah, yeah I mean oh, I would like to know what other ploy she had just on the go because at the same time that can't be her one investment you know she can't just do the one prediction and then step away no plus who's paying her for that I don't know I don't, does she get paid like oh is it the if it comes true, like on is it like on your success rate? Like unless there's like Jeremy Beadless back in the day, like <laughs> of the Roman Empire, and he's like, ah, oh, that's, that's so disrespectful. Sorry, but you know he's like he's dead. For the rest of the but you know he, he kind of he did not have a hand in this. No, absolutely not. Nobody have one. And, and but that that sort of thing, like that that that's good drama in those days, isn't it, Oedipus? Yeah, that is that is a lot. Like I I, I didn't know that. I just assumed. <coughs> I just because he's he's got a friggin' complex named after him. Yeah, the Oedipus complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and imagine you're him up like because you know when you sort of say like, I wonder if like his spirits up there being like seriously, Are you fucking serious. Yeah, I didn't know it. I didn't know it was my mom. I swear. And back in those days, the age difference wouldn't have been like you're probably thinking. Like yeah. my mum was maybe like thirty or thirty one when I was born. So, but she could have been like fourteen or something. He was maybe a t- yeah. He was probably a teenager whenever mm-hmm. he fucking. So you're 20 and you're shacking up with a, a 34-year-old player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until you find out it's your mum. Yeah, but then you're like... But, but then they keep going. I don't know. Because then you know, they keep I think, going, it's weird. I think that he might have killed everybody. You know, let me double-check this. Um, I think Oedipus lost the head a bit, I think, when he... Oedipus. Oedipus. Uh, his mum. So, I mean, he's actually... And disrespectful, this is the first thing a Kieran will be annoyed about. He was the Greek king of Thebes. 
a tragic hero in Greek mythology, not Roman. King of Thebes. Yeah, Thebes. That's that. Uh, it's like how Chris Eubank would say Roman. Yeah. Term, yeah. <laughs> Roman King <of> Thebes. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Sophocles, Oedipus Rex was what the Oedip- the That's Jurassic Park. Is yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, he's born to King Laius, Queen of. Ju- Jocasta of Thebes. Uh, she wished he wished to thwart the prophecy, so sent the shepherd servant to leave Oedipus to die. These are not easy things to say, are they? Like no, no. <laughs> However, the shepherd took pity on the baby and passed him to another shepherd, who gave Oedipus to the ki- to King Polybus and Queen Meriope to raise as their own. So it was actually raised right. by another king. To thwart the king of Thebes. Yeah. So the king of Thebes, he moved to King Mer- Merope, and then. He would end up killing his father and marrying his mother, but unaware of the true parentage, believe he was fated to murder Polybus and marry Merope. So then he left Thebes. So he's like, I'm not going to marry Buck Moma here. I'll go the opposite way to do that. And then by proxy, he ended up. I think that one last one. Yeah, Buck and his, his own ma. So let's see. Yeah. So years later, um, Oedipus searched to find who had killed Laius and discovered that he himself was responsible. Jocasta, upon realizing she had married her own son, hanged herself Oedipus then seized two pins from her dress and blinded himself with them I mean that yeah no one wins the legend of Oedipus has been retold in many versions and was used by the rat Sigmund Freud to name and give a mythic precedent to the Oedipus complex he doesn't help them either no but Sigmund Freud is a bit of a creep too wasn't he he was into I mean he looks like a bit of a I think he do you know what I think he bucked his ma yeah and tried to be like listen he was trying to justify it yeah I mean is that his ma I would the book, you know. It looks very. It sort of looks like him, doesn't it? Yeah, Sigmund Freud. Do you know what his actual real name was? No. Sigismund Shlomo Freud, which is any wonder you changed it. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, yeah, that's, that's unbelievable. That's strange. But yeah, he's mugged Oedipus in the legend of Oedipus there. Oh. And Oedipus does need retold. Look. You know what? There's a TV show. <laughs> Clear in Oedipus's name. You know? oh, oh right okay I thought you meant like just seeing lads like, I thought you meant how you have like like you have three women you don't know which one's your mum <laughs> yeah that's like um, no. I used to do a bit back in the day about, about my fictional game show Moneybox which was kind of similar to that have I ever told you the premise of Moneybox I must have seen it years ago probably well basically right what it is it's a game show that I, for the sake of the bit that I pitched <coughs> to uh, television it's like it's called Moneybox so you get you get to pick a money box. you have three money boxes. One money box has no pounds in it, or no, sorry, one money box is ten million pounds, one is one million pounds, and one is no pounds, and you get to pick a box. Mm. However, that seems too easy to just pick because then you're gonna like there's no mm. there's no risk in that. So, however, what you do for the sake of this is you have three holes, waist height, oh, and then what happens? No, I is, remember this, but yeah, <laughs> keep going. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. Your dad puts his dick <laughs> through one hole, like you have brother, don't you? No. No. Do you have um who's your best friend in the world? For the sake of this for the listeners, Jordan Robinson. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, well, pretty much so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your dad pops his dick through, Jordan pops his dick through, and then just a random guy you don't know pops his dick through. There's no particular order, you don't know who's is who. Mm. And you have to pick a dick. And you just have to pop in your mouth and do whatever. So it's just in a box, and I just put my head in the box. Yeah, but no, you see the dick and you just Yeah, but you only see the dick. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah, nothing else. And then you so, and then once you do that, you're like you you do that. I mean, I don't be vulgar here, but you could do it to completion if you're of anything about for, you for them to complete or me. Yes, for you. <laughs> Either way, you can you, you both if you want. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, you can cross swords. I don't know. You can do whatever you want. Um, but then once you you once you finish that task, you, you get to go and pick a box, which is it could, so. You say you, you open it up and you get ten million pounds. I mean the wall lowers you have to take the deck out first because if it lowered whilst the deck yeah, probably okay. cut the deck off and then you see so best case scenario you get 10 million pounds mm-hmm. and you suck off a random guy best case scenario yeah, yeah. yeah. or Wor- Jordan yeah. yeah or worst case scenario you get nothing to suck off your dad so this is where mm-hmm. my my thought is what level would somebody go to because money box is a thing where like it's really you could win mm-hmm. like you could the, win big or? the win could be Life changing, and then there's other money boxes. I Man, let's be honest. I think it's going to be life changing no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very, right. <laughs> very fair to put it. Yeah, it's definitely going to. But like, there's other, there's other ones without the sexual element to money box. So like, you have the uh, the the round I call the elevator. 
So you get put into an elevator, right? And it goes up and down and up and down. Sorry, do it again. Up and down. <laughs> right. I mean, nobody make that anything. So it goes up and down, up and down, and you're you're a bit disorientated and you don't know where you're at, right. and it stops. And all you do is you fall back out of the elevator. So it opens your eyes close and you fall back. So okay. best case scenario, mm. and again you have to get up and collect the money box. It's on the ground, so you fall back and you land on the ground. Right from the ground. Is it safe? This would be now if you're on the second floor and you fall back. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right, right, right. Or if it's on the sixth floor and you fall back, mm. you know. And the thing is, if you get up, mm. you can go and pl- collect the money box. So best case scenario, you take a fall, you get ten million quid, like just on the ground on your bum, ten million mm. quid. Worst case scenario, Christopher Reeve. Yeah, Christopher Reeve. You know, not, but maybe not even as good as Christopher Reeve. You know, so yeah. But then again, I like the thought of somebody going because like I would maybe consider it like say if someone said that, yeah. that one to me I'd be like you know what I could but then this could happen but it could like and then it's like if you fall out of four you might still be you might break a few things but you, know what, you do hear those things don't you was there not one recently where like a kid or something fell off like seven or eight stories and yeah they're all right now yeah how does that how no because like that's the thing we were we were chatting about the other day about how like the human body is so mental a thing that like yeah. You like you can be one of these people who get one punch and they die, yeah. And then you give people who fall off. Or like you, there's a person who survived mm-hmm. an explode a, a, a plane collision in midair and has fallen thousands of feet. Somehow it's survived it. McCagney takes one step. Yeah, yeah. Like that's but it's, it's that sort of thing. Like you just yeah. don't know what you're getting. Because then, yeah. like I remember, like you think about what the process of a woman mm. giving birth is. Like that's a, an horrendous thing. Like it's it's yeah. traumatic. I'd say, but then they're okay again. It's like it's it's crazy how the body does that. Yeah, you know, and that's it's like a, so. That's what I think with money box. I, the curiosity of me is not about sucking off your dad. No, it's no. about wood. Like what? Like if if this was say so. So I don't think obviously the actual game of money box would ever come into existence, mm. unless someone in Japan has a benefactor. Did they have anything to gain from it? Like, does the random guy have anything to gain from it, or the other, or? Well, oh, you get paid Jordan the feature, the dad, right? Okay. No, but I mean, what I what I would say is because this would probably be on the dark web. Or do they get what's left? What I don't pick. That's a good idea. Yeah, you could definitely change that up. But this is like something like hostile, almost. You know, I like the mm. idea of what people would do, like Squid Game, almost. What level would the people go to 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 like what? Where's someone's morality at? Do you know what I mean? Like, because mm. then someone said, like, we we again, this always comes about when you're having beers, yeah. <laughs> but. Excuse me a second, I've got the cold. It's okay. Sorry, listeners. Um, but somebody, like, was like, someone was like, would you, again, will you say an analogy of your dad suck okay. his dick? And be like, would... Maybe know, his or him himself. Either way, like, he could, <laughs> he could, whatever way works, but something that's weird. Like, right. would you would you suck your own dick in front of a live audience? Stream the millions online? What position am I in? You you have to figure that out yourself. You know, it's something that's really degrading or something, right? Because I think if it's legs, <coughs> if it's legs in the air, you just don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's more degrading. Uh huh. Yeah, because that's he's sucking his own dick, but also there's his asshole. Oh, because I thought you meant to say that you'd be sucking his dick, but your legs would be up in the air. I'd be like, what way? No, no, I you? mean sucking my own. No, if I'm yeah. sucking my own dick, like it would be. But then again. Could, if you were just facing the audience doing it yeah <laughs> just bent over like yeah. yeah plus where do you put your hands that's all they figured out but the point is like <laughs> there were certain people being like I would never do that I would there's never and I was like but what, if, but what if somebody came to you with a blank check you know and they're like mm. and they offered you so they, they could so like would you say they're like would you do it for 10, 10 grand you'd probably be like no nah, absolutely not yeah. then if someone's like oh. 750 grand it's a big jump you're like and then you start weighing up the other options. You'd be like, "There's the point of." Yeah, I was gonna say tw- yes to twenty, yeah, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean. That amount of money, and then this is why it's called money box. Mm. It's because like you can think, and then cause someone is all hypothetical. But imagine you saw that actual money yeah. right there, and you're like, if you can touch it and you know it's real, you're like, because then mm. a bit of me. But then there's the the follow up to that is like, what would the situation afterwards be? Would it be worth the money? The awkwardness? Depends or? if you swallow or not. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to. I mean, you got to be polite. You know, you got to give it a go. But that's the question, isn't it? Like, what would you? Yeah. you know, I my my argument and my point to this whole fucking yeah. stupid drawn out story was, I think 
anybody in the world has a a, a buyout point. A pr- yeah, a price, a price. for yeah. sucking dicks. And Would then, you do it on stage like, yourself if you could? I mean, I'd be really proud of myself because I'd have had to lose a bit of weight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'd you're, not, get, you're not there yet. I'd have to be like, if I was like, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. I'd be fucking doing it on stage for free. Plus, I'd be my I'd close it. Would this be like a would this be like a like a Patreon exclusive or? Yeah, I'm open to doing it. I'm, you know why? Like, mm. there's the stars in her eyes, and there's been uh, the who wants to win a grand for charity and stuff mm. on, on Shane's Patreon. Yeah, maybe that's what I need to mind money box. Maybe. Oh, there you go. Because <laughs> b- believe it or not, what's behind that sign is in fact a glory hole. <laughs> yeah, I just so. wonder what the smell is. Yeah, no, it's actually me because I'm a bit B.O. actually in this top, and I apologize for that because you're very smart. But I didn't notice. I didn't notice. Yeah, but go to the gym after, obviously. So, the gym's the guy behind there, isn't it? Yeah, he's the guy <laughs> in the glory hole. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, we've really digressed. I yeah. think off. I'm just trying to think what the best. What would be your position? Because I'm thinking. Just well, I tried to bite my toenails recently and thought it dislocated my knee. Like I used to be able to do that with ease. Used to enjoy about my toenails. Maybe you, need, maybe you need some ease. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do that. I just use cat normally to <laughs> see how that goes. But yeah, I used to be able to fit my entire foot in my mouth, like the, the, all. Well, the we all did when we were babies, did like. No, but I'm talking about teenager. Like I used to, I used to bite my teenager. I used to bite the side of my foot. This is so gross. The hard skin, the side oh, of my foot. Jesus. But you were pretty flexible, though. Yeah, very short legs, though too. You know. So see, I can't even tie. Really not. I can barely touch my knees. Never mind my toes. Like. Oh, it's real awkward when you do head, shoulders, knees and toes then. Yes, head, <laughs> shoulders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> head, shoulders. Awkward. Yeah, yeah it's just... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you want to pitch? I mean, sexually, no. I think that's kind of... All my sexual shows out of the way. Um, you have to make it. I know. That's what my wife keeps telling me, otherwise she's going to leave me. I think you do. Yeah, you have to make it. You're fucking, or else go back to your day job. <laughs> no, make the sh- make make the show. You know, but again, I feel like you know. See, this is huge. How long ago I, I came up with the idea because the host mm-hmm. was Dale Winton, and he's now left us. You know, he was the dream host for me because I could just see him being good banter with it. He would, he would, he'd love it. Yeah, I feel like Bradley Walsh should like to host it now. He'd be a bit different, you know. But then now, because it's fucking twenty twenty three, you'd probably need like a bit more diversity in there, you know. So you'd probably have to have like. Ashley Banjo. Ashley Banjo? <laughs> Ashley Tranjo. If he became a trans guy, that'd be even better. Um, mm. But yeah, I don't know who who get the host it. But I mean, I feel like having seen Squid Game, I feel like I'm owed some royalties. Because I think they took kind of some of the elements of... Yeah, Money I mean, they didn't... It's not as good, obviously. No. I mean, game, I mean, it's not as good. Season two of Squid Game, if it starts off the first game as a glory hole, you'll be like, fuck's sake. Yeah. That's just unbelievable. <laughs> so you have a show coming up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no I do and uh, which is it's a good um, it's a good segue because the show is literally yeah. called Unsuitable there you go and I mean I think that's what the last 20 minutes was yeah. and yeah you know there we have it also Unsuitable yeah this is your second solo show yes second after the Pundertaker yes the Pundertaker last year was my debut solo mm-hmm. show I did, I did the split show with Ian Thompson last April but second one just on my own <laughs> Um, so I called it unsuitable, which I thought was quite smart because suits mm-hmm. and a lot of what I say is unsuitable. What you should do is finish by taking all your a bit off with every segment of the show. Yeah, take your jacket off, and by the end you're unsuited. And I'm just sucking my own dick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> listen, that's, that's how you <laughs> that's, close it off. That yeah. is that is the closer. I mean, that would close a lot of things. I yeah. certainly. <laughs> just don't sit in the front row so unsuitable yeah because yeah. actually last time I, I was up close and personal and you had a tooth knocked out yes which was yeah. uh, again this, that well, you were right the there yeah, I was right there and I was like oh there, there it is mm. I felt bad for you that, at that moment I thought that's yeah. that's not what you signed up for yeah, it was a bit of drama like. yeah, it it's not a real tooth it was a bridge like. yeah, you should do you should have just sent and sucked your own dick <laughs> so unsuitable with the gloves on when is it 18th of November limelight Limelight and tickets, and are, tickets are available. Tickets are available. And what can people expect from it? Because I must say, I was, I just need to say, I was at the, at the Undertaker, and I thought it was a great show. It was Thank a good you. time. By the way, I don't think enough was really made of the entrance. I think it was the greatest entrance to a stand-up performance I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. It's it was. I feel like I need to do something with this one now as well because I kind of set a 
a standard for myself almost. You know what I would like to see you do? I would yeah. like to see you have a set. Oh, well, I do. I'm planning one. Nice. I'll we'll talk about it. I'll tell. I'll tell you afterwards. Just Good. so we. So Cause, not yeah, because I was going to just start brainstorming there, but yeah. you've seen where my brain goes. I want to start brainstorming, <laughs> so I'll maybe yeah. best save that for off air. So it's just in case. Yeah, I'd like it. Cause I'd like the whole thing to be. It was very. We put that. We put that together quite quickly as well. The Undertaker one. Like, yeah. And it was we were literally just rehearsing about an hour before the show. But um, I went to see the tiger who came to tea at the Ulster Hall. Oh yeah, the book. And it had a real good. What was the show? Would have been yeah, a bit right. shit. <laughs> you just a book on stage, <laughs> just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> no one reading it. It's just, <laughs> just there. Like yeah, whenever you know when people go and like look at the scriptures and stuff, they're like, ah, oh, this is fascinating. Mm. Um, but it had a it had a pretty simple set, and I just thought it looked real good. Yeah, yeah, it's subtle but effective. Yeah, that's, and that's what I'm aiming for. And is it an entire? Is it an hour? No, it'll probably be about 40, 45 minutes, I would nice say. Nice of new material. Mostly new. I'll probably put in, see, with my last show, a lot of those jokes I wrote just before the show. Okay. So I feel like I still can. <coughs> or sometimes, I think with me as well, because of my style, because 99% of what I do is just one-liners, Yeah. I can just throw in some of my favourite jokes. Mm-hmm. I think I can get away with it. Like, if one, like if... Guys that are doing like bits and stuff, you can't uh-huh. put in a twenty a twenty minute bit into every show. Whereas I feel like I can just throw one in. Yeah, because you're talking maybe like twenty seconds of the show. Yeah, sort of thing like. But uh, yeah, I probably have at the minute. I would say I have about forty forty five new jokes. And how are you finding the process of coming up with a new show? Really fucking difficult. Mm-hmm. Really difficult. <laughs> but I'm getting there. Like it's come. It's two months. Two months yesterday, pretty much. Because this is the interesting thing to me, and I, I always find the difference between, like, like if I come up with a bit, mm. something that maybe happened to me one day, and I'll kind of work it around that. What's yeah. the process like for a one-liner? Do you have any, like, do you, do you write words down and try to make jokes off that, or how do you Yeah, kind of a lot of the time it is, like, a random, I use, like, a random word generator, and I'll try and work jokes around that. Like, I remember one of my earliest jokes, like, I wrote a few years ago. It was the the brother joke, the cabbage yes. joke. So it was basically it was the word cabbage. Yeah. And I seen the word cabbage and I was like, right, the word cabbage what is cabbage? Cabbage is also a vegetable. Uh-huh. And um what is also a vegetable uh-huh. is someone in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> Which is I don't know what's terrible, but um then that's where that joke came from. I feel like it's I don't want to tell it's weird telling the joke. Yeah. I mean you could tell it if you want to, is it in the show? No, nah, no, it's not gonna be in the show. They have to tell a joke. Well, yeah, well it's just um Growing up, my brother was known as the Cabbage Patch Kid, not because he looked like one of the dolls, but because he was in a horrific accident and was left in a vegetative state. Uh-huh. And yeah. then I continue, I don't have a brother. Not anymore. Good joke. Thank yeah. you. It's and it's also unsuitable. You know, so oh, oh, yeah, it's absolutely unsuitable. Expect horrendous things like that. I'll tell you, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you some of the things that I can't say. Nice. And, and in terms, <laughs> see if that as well, like you... Do you do you have like when when you're coming up with jokes? Do you have a process that you you do other than that? Do you like do you sit and do you write or do you like walk about? Because uh, like for me, a lot of times, like a lot of people get ideas in the shower. You know, if mm-hmm. I I'd like to get to the point one day where I have hired a guy that sits mm-hmm. in the shower and writes down what I should write. <laughs> doing. But yeah, do you have a, like say if you're like oh, I need to come up with new jokes? Do you discipline yourself to write sit down with a pen and pad or what? Do you yeah, do? no, I'll literally sit down with the laptop or a pen and pad. And just look at as many words as I can and be like, there has to be something in this. Or I'll look at the news and try and find some topical shit, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, But, yeah, I think with what I do, because I have to have mm-hmm. so much volume mm-hmm. and so much variety as well, it's so difficult. Like, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to do another show next year. I'm, con- I'm considering doing almost like a combined show. Yeah. But see that too. Like I mm. think that's something that's a problem mm. with the local scene. Now yeah. we're all very quick to say how great the scene is, which it is. Yeah, of especially course. in light of other things that have been raised <coughs> on other scenes. There's no problems like that here that I am aware of, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, but what a problem is too is like in a lot of other places you don't have people churning out new art every year. I think that maybe puts yeah. on some people's shoulders an unrealistic expectation that you have to do it. Yeah, an unnecessary sort of yeah. pressure. Like, yeah, for sure. And you don't. And then, and then sometimes I look at it too. Like, I, I hadn't personally planned on doing a show this year, mm. and roleplay just kind of 
came to be through sort of organically came together. Yeah, because I was like writing more. I was mm. I was just I'm in I'm in in the pocket of enjoying yeah. writing at the minute. Again, I'll run a couple of bits by you whenever I finish. But yeah. that sort of and then the, I got offered to do the wall garden. And I was like, this is like my dream mm. place. Great, such a you know, game. so it's yeah. like this is this is what I this doesn't get better for me yeah. than doing it where I take my kids at home. You know, <laughs> at home, five minutes from the house, yeah. fail at least for a pint afterwards. This is it for me. Yeah. But um. I just came to be, but I'm not going to go next year. Like I have to write a brand new show yeah. because I think. And then if you if you take a break, so say you write, mm. um, a hundred jokes, yeah, in the next year, mm. and you're like, maybe forty of them are like, absolute yeah. bangers, and you're yeah, maybe yeah. just a bit because like any show, whenever you do a show, you need, you do a bit of filler. You oh yeah, you have to have a bit of filler. Yeah, but yeah. if you do like two hundred jokes, mm. and you get maybe fifty bangers out of both, yeah. you have four. You know the show's automatically better, and I think that's because yeah. there's been some shows I've seen recently mm-hmm. where I'm like, if you had a not done that show, you could have had a much better show next year. You know, plus I think as well, everyone has this sort of R in their head. It's like it has to be yeah. an R. It has to be an R. I don't know. Sometimes, like you were saying, you did what about an R twenty, 20 yeah. which is which is great, and I think for your style that works. But I think some people as well, it doesn't necessarily have. You don't have to get to. Like if you have a good fifty minutes, yeah, you don't necessarily have to go right. Well, I need ten minutes, otherwise it's yeah. gonna be shit. Like you look at like some other specials that spring to mind. Like so there's some you see nowadays of like well-known comedians who are doing like half hours here, yeah. which is fine. Michelle Wolf has a new special out that I watched mm-hmm. the first. She has it in segments, like twenty-minute segments in different yeah. comedy clubs, mm-hmm. and she did the three. And the first segment I watched to hers on Netflix, I thought mm-hmm. that's the best special I've seen in a long time because yeah. I get a lot. I get excited about seeing specials, and then a lot mm-hmm. of time I, I go, mm. mm-hmm. it's like underwhelming. Yeah, I don't. Wanna, I don't. Wanna, I don't want to be fucking di- like. I, I watched Shane Gillis' special on Netflix, and I went, I didn't like it. No. It just wasn't. I was like, mm-hmm. I felt it was. Again, a guy who is under a lot of pressure to because he's hot shit at the minute to turn stuff to turn out. out, and it yeah. was like a lot of punchlines are just that's gay. I'm like, really? Mm. Is that is that a punchline? Not everything's gay. No, a I'm, lot of things are. Yeah, true, but a lot of like, again, you're going, mm. come on, that's not that. Yeah. Hilarious. you know, because again, like I kind of have got into the rhythm of my uh, last couple of shows, like my previous show, yeah. bits and pieces. I had my closer was a callback to my opener. Whereas my mm. last show, my I always like to end on the biggest laugh. I mean, that's yeah. how you're supposed to do it. Nah. But I, I, I hadn't figured that out. See, my work in progress hadn't figured out how to bring the biggest laugh to the, to the end. end of it. And I've been doing the, this particular bit mm. isolated for a bit, and I did it one night in Lavery's at that shit. Did it the next night, mm. went really well. Still hadn't got to the point though where it was yeah. the proper rounded off closure mm-hmm. but the wall garden I, I thought I had it figured out and you know when you know in your head you're like yeah. I think that's it and then I did it mm-hmm. and it was a massive round of applause and I went yes Davey that's, that's it happy days but again it takes time mm-hmm. and then what's that process like for you because obviously with with doing yeah. like a bit for you is like you say 10 seconds how Could how be. can you how do you restructure that or how do you put out new uh, bits and see what works and what doesn't when I, well, when it comes to sort of doing gigs at the minute I'm not worried in terms of how things are structured I feel like if I write a good joke, if it's a good joke, it doesn't really matter where I put it uh-huh. at this stage. Yeah. When I'm just doing maybe like like I'm in Lavery's this week. So I'll do I'll be doing like three quarters of my whole set is basically brand new stuff. Yeah. And I'll be trying that there. But when it comes to the actual show, I basically rank so my last show I had ni- ninety three jokes. Yeah. That was that was the whole show. And I then ranked them one, two and three. One's filler. Uh-huh. Two is regularly gets a laugh but maybe isn't a will never get a round of applause sort of yeah. thing three is not often gets a round of applause but pretty solid uh-huh. ne- doesn't usually fail sort of thing like um and then i just sort of break it up you, you can't have too many ones at the start uh-huh. kind of any ones at the end yes so it basically has to go some threes mm-hmm. some ones scattered throughout some two scattered throughout and then my last 10 jokes i think in my last show were all threes yeah and I think that's the only way to do it. I sort of tried doing it whenever I first started getting back into comedy. I used to try and be like, right, well, these are the girlfriend jokes. These are the family jokes. Mm-hmm. These are jokes about fucking animals or something. Yeah. And do it that way. But then I don't like that. Yeah. I'd rather 
every time I open my mouth on stage, you don't know what's coming, sort of thing. Yeah. Like, much my, like that. my favorite joke you do is I don't know if you're doing it again this time, but it's about the extension. Oh yeah, no, I don't do that. One what anymore. did you rate it as? Uh, probably two because not everyone got it yeah see not everyone that's, yeah. like, but it, it is because it, again I, what I like about that it's such a visual yeah. you imagine it and it's ridiculous yeah. and I think it's fucking so stupid yeah, it's so stupid every like time that. it makes me like <laughs> when you came up with that yeah. did you go oh yes was that one when you went I love that one oh yeah I loved it yeah, yeah it's one of those like, some jokes that I there was jokes I did as well I tried really hard to do I'll tell you the joke because I don't, I don't even do it anymore because yeah. it never got a laugh uh huh I would have got a laugh out of the fact that I would have acknowledged that it didn't get a laugh, but the joke was um, my mum never learned how to ride a bicycle. She mm-hmm. even had stabilizers on her menstrual cycle. Yeah. Like, that's weird. Yeah. That doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. It makes no sense. That shouldn't be funny. Yeah. But for some reason, comedians find that funny. Yeah. But audiences don't. Because obviously, <laughs> you've taken the word cycle. Yeah. Yeah. But and so I also, you know another so thing, and I just want to want to mention this. And again, <laughs> probably, and you can just tell me shut up because it's probably not my place to say. But I feel that audiences aren't as fair to women talking about women things mm. or body parts, periods, mm. their genitals, sexual things, as they are about guys talking about wanking and dicks. So, like, I've seen some acts. Oh, you mean the thing women will get more criticised? Yeah, but it's like I've yeah. seen women talking about like their their yeah. vaginas. I nearly said pussies there, but you know they do be bits yeah, and like my list and that. You know, and and it's like you go, that's funny, but the audience is going, mm. oh, the, you know. So I think yeah. you know when there's that whole thing about like w- whether there's more mm. female comedians or there's not enough, which uh, there isn't enough. But I also yeah. think part of the problem is that audiences need to be more... They're judged far too harshly. Yeah, they're judged far too harshly. And audiences yeah. need to also go, hold on, there's no difference between a woman talking about her yeah. bits and there's a guy like... Because like, it's so normalised, guys, to talk about wanking flat out. You well, know, that's it. And, and dick think, jokes. Yeah, you for know? sure. Like, I have so. loads of... A lot of my stuff is quite sort of filthy. But I feel like I get it away. I think it was actually it was William actually said to me once that I am probably one of the dirtiest acts on the yeah. scene. But I get away with it. Because of how I do it. But that menstrual cycle joke, people mm. will have heard that mm. and gone, you know. Yeah. So you need to sort of dumb, like, like you know what I mean? I think people need to mm. be a bit more. And again, if that's not my place to yeah, say. it's not a good joke. No, no. <laughs> it's not no. a good joke. <laughs> but that's that's fair. Like, at least you feel like, that nah, it's not good. But yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. But you know, because that's what I've heard. Because I've seen a couple of, of acts do, like, real funny bits. But because of the subject matters, maybe a bit sort of it's, more taboo how, yeah. or something. And people are just yeah. uncomfortable with it. You know? it is how you it is how you approach it mm-hmm. like I've been doing that joke that guy do a butt plug joke and I've been doing it for a couple of years and there's times where it just gets absolutely nothing because it's so so bad yeah your granny yeah yeah that's, that's my bad. granny's granny's butt plug yeah. yeah but I mean listen it's fun a, tr- a true story that I did is a bit I kind of I've buried it now I think but your granny yeah <laughs> <I think. Sorry. laughs> but my um, no I, I found what I thought was a dildo in my granny's bed or my granddad's bed after he died I got his bed right. and um, <coughs> I, there's this rig rubber dick in it and I was just like oh my god and I'm, I was about 8 or 9 or something that happened and I knew Jesus. what a penis was but I assumed, <laughs> I'd like to think so by yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I just mm. ran and threw it over the fence and like hit it and then I was watching it like I got one out of my side of my mind threw it over into like some farm at the back of my house and I picked up the toilet roll and all went in got the toilet roll wrapped it up and threw it away <laughs> and then it was like years later when I was a grown up an adult I was watching one of Patrick Kilty's documentaries about the troubles and he brought this blind dude out being like I was blinded here in this spot and all that so disrespectful that I did that being <laughs> blinded here and then he was like and I was blinded by this and then he lifted up my granny's dildo but it was a rubber bullet I hadn't realised that for some reason it was just a rubber bullet my, my granny was into like history and all that sort How of shit How small was your granny? But, a, but this rubber bullet was like a proper oh, really? rubber bullet. Oh, really? Yeah. the big ones? Yeah, I, I, like, I, I couldn't like, tell you what they're like. I you the rubber bullet. The, the I actually couldn't even tell you. No, because like, I thought they were they were small, but these are these are like whoppers. Uh, let's see, rubber bullet. Uh, <laughs> I mean, traditional rubber bullet. I thought you were going to tell me that you threw it over the fence and like 10 years later you pulled back your covers and there it was. <laughs> <laughs> Go say put it on a dick tree, great. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, so that's, that, that is it there, right? That's exactly the one that... Jeez. So, like, I saw that and thought it was like. And you threw it over the fence and blinded him? Yeah. 
<laughs> killed somebody. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. I blind. I blinded uh, the guy that was in Kilty's documentary. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's it there. So that and, and like that's phallic, isn't it? That's like when you're a child and you see that. That is phallic. Albeit it's a pointy bell end, but you know what I mean. It could. Yeah. And then see, that's probably when you're thinking of the wee, yeah, wee thermal flask. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but not no, not this baby. You know, I mean, you was, could use that. And like, it was they, weighty too. And you, you could, could use, yeah. Yeah, maybe they were. No, I'd like. You know what? That's one thing I like. I like them to back. Why was it? Why was it? As, that doesn't explain why I was in his bed. No, no, there was drawers under the bed. Right. Oh, well, was it? You didn't pull back the covers. No, again, no, right, no, right, no, right, no, right, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, it was like and they were in drawers of the bed because they're like he right. had. He was in the like photography. In the like, cameras, not. Yeah, cameras. <laughs> right there. Like my, I'm just thinking. Going, I'm on the bits together. So he had that. He had cameras. He had, it's all a bit weird. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, he was into like so. Yeah, it was a bit, a bit fucking odd. But I would like them to, to come back. Like, see, you know, if you ever see any, if you believe in afterlife or whatever, if you ever see them again, they'll be like, oh, why we did use that? It was a rubber bullet, but doubled up as a dildo. And, but the only thing, don't worry, it wasn't your granny's. Good. It was mine. <laughs> it's my butt plug. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so that's so unsuitable again. Very, yeah, very unsuitable. 18th of November limelight. Yeah, and just follow Johnny Bo comedy. It's all on there. I mean, you know what? I was about to get into more stuff with you there, but you've just rounded it up yourself. Yeah. Where so they can find you, Johnny Bo comedy. Yeah, now you've any other questions? Like, I mean, yeah, fucking that. There you go. Put put it on the me. Like this is my podcast. I'm the host, and you just come in here. Well, unless you want to ask me, no, I don't. No, we're I was good. Gonna say, yeah, we've covered a lot. We yeah, have we have covered, covered, covered a lot. I mean, we've covered a lot. We've uncovered a lot. Oh, gotcha. Um, you know what? I think both of us have had a couple of, of a hard couple of weeks, so it's good to switch the brains on again. For sure. And uh, get you know try to be silly again for a bit. You very, know, very, very silly. And then yeah, so what you're going to do now is go home on the Amazon, order Oedipus, yeah, and get it read, yeah. I'm going to go and lift weights, obviously, because it's all I do now. Yeah. I'm going to try and suck my own dick on the train. Try. Like you're try, not yeah, an expert yeah. on it, yeah. Not yet. Yeah, you actually have a move. Not you, yet. like, link the legs over your head, and then you squeeze, like, a submission hold, and then them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's not going to happen. No. Speaking of, have you signed my table yet? I haven't, actually. That's no. the one. T- I didn't do that last time. Stupid bastard. Did, you Too busy been? trying to suck your own dick. Yeah, pretty much. Johnny Bo, I follow him at Johnny Bo Comedy. Johnny Bo Comedy Johnny on Bo every, Comedy. Every, pretty much everything. Where's your, where's your, where's your dope spot? What's your favorite social media? Uh, Instagram, definitely. Like, yeah, I don't. The rest of them are weird. Nah, TikTok, not for me. You know, and then, then everyone's like, "Oh, you need to be on to go viral." Why do I need to go viral? Yeah. Shut up. See, it's I need to go viral. Yeah. What do I need? The, 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 the fucking appreciation of a bot. No, exactly. but you know what? Speaking of appreciation of bots, I do have listeners' questions. If you want to do those, actually, before, oh, do I actually? Oh, of course okay. you do. Of course you do. Fucking hell, the people, the people want to know things, and I'm the, gonna the, the fucking already find out. Much. <laughs> Joe wants to know: Creed, Nickelback, or Stained? This is my pants, or yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all sound like stuff that could go onto your pants realistically. Yeah, um, For me, it's very simply: it's that order. Creed yeah. one, Nickelback two. Stain three. Stained only really had what outside, and then it's been a while. Stained was what's his name, wasn't it? That was around the same. Was that, that was Fred. Durst, Fred Durst was a mate of the guy in Stained. That's what it was. Yeah. I knew there was a connection, and he sang, and he was in the video with one of them, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, I go the same. Remember. That is very Durst. Yeah, it isn't. I'm Durst. I'm Durst. I'm Durst boy today. Um, yeah, I like. I would go with that same order. Yeah, because Creed has that. Yeah, absolute tunes. Um. Paul says was what <laughs> Paul's always doing weird shit you know I don't know Paul I don't think <coughs> <coughs> what's Paul up to he was watching an, I was watching a 9-11 documentary recently okay. everyone can remember where they were when it happened if you're there of a certain age like us Dave I was in school media studies doing coursework the radio was on and the news just came on I was getting interested and Gail started twisting the dial looking for dance music so Gail must have been a fellow pupil where was Uncle Dave in 9-11, 2001? What was Gail doing? Twisting the knob, changing the radio station, because she didn't like shit. So when 9 go oh, fucking twisting her knob, Dad. Right. That's weird. I was in school. You probably were as well, weren't you? Yeah, I actually remember getting collected from school. My granny picked me up, and she was like, there's some sort of handling going on in New York. Planes crashed into and then on the way home, we're like, oh, bollocks, is another one. And I was like, Grant is just checking his bullets. Yeah, and he was like, listen, as long as it wasn't a fucking rubber bullet, we're all right. Um, but I remember hearing about it and going, I don't think this was an accident. Yeah. I remember thinking, where was Obama? 
Yeah, do you, uh, fair, fair play to you for even knowing Obama back then. <laughs> Obama was being gay back in those days. You was see it? about his letters. No. He wrote letters about fantasizing about having gay sex every letters, day. Letters G A Y. Yeah, he's just like. <laughs> 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 but yeah, he was he was apparently. But but I mean that's not gay to say you have gay fantasies, is it? That's just banter. I'm leave him alone. No, me Mitchell has said name something you can say in church and at an orgy. Why does grandma know all the words? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Can your niece and worship this beast? <laughs> That's probably seeing this church. Yeah. Yeah. What could you say? You say in an orgy? In an orgy? <laughs> oh, there has to be something like, oh, who's that guy on the organ? Oh, yeah. It's very true. Yeah. Oh. I mean, why is someone so startled at church? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rosemary knows her way around an organ. Yeah. yeah. I don't know this one. <laughs> Call me father. No, that's gross. That's way bit like Yeah, then that's about the best, the cleanest thing you've said. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, listen, I'm going to baptise you. With Sp- your cock. Bonk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you couldn't say that in church. You know? <laughs> no, you couldn't, you couldn't. Yeah. We're just talking orgies now. Man. How would you like to see my penis? Um, maybe you could say it in church, I guess, too. Is that the, first, that the Old Testament? Or is that <laughs> that's the old one, it's the Oedipus one. Um, and James says, what film would be better if it was set in Belfast? That's a good question. Ooh. That is a good question. You just do Titanic, but before it went. Because you know what? I always think it was fucking fine when I left here. Fuck's sake. Mm. Wouldn't be as dramatic, though. Uh, but if you did Titanic in Belfast, that would literally just be a film about a boat leaving. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's a happy ending, yeah. isn't it? Well. Fuck me. There you go. It's just the end of it's just them listening to the radio. Got off for fuck's sake. <laughs> Oh, yeah. shit. We're okay though, aren't we? It's yeah. fine, we left here, wasn't it? That's our line. Turn it off. Yeah. I know, it's just worse <laughs> Gale when you need her. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are some of your favourite films? Um, I don't know, I don't want to go. It's always cl- the men are quite cliche though. Like, yeah, you know, it'd be good, Sense of Alarms, if it was from here. I just think Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. fucking. Oh, what's the line? He'd be yeah. like. Uh, I a fucking TV license man mm-hmm. tried to see if I pay my license <laughs> did I fuck <laughs> so I had a whole little fucking bottle of buck fast yeah because <laughs> a ton of beans a bottle yeah. of buck fast <laughs> <laughs> fucking ten of hens and a bottle of buck fast yeah <laughs> getting blocked that eight. no I probably can't say that one anymore um, so what are yeah. some of your favourite favorite one um, most of them are do you know what best my favourite film like I mentioned earlier Jurassic Park literally my favourite film probably of all time Jurassic Park well yeah. How would it be if it was set in Belfast? Just fucking... It'd be the oh, just be storming, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, there's plenty of dinosaurs there. Um, but no, it'd be up at the yeah. Belfast Zoo, wouldn't it? And it'd be... Because you know the way the wee elephants are, they're moving to Holland. They're moving to Holland? They're moving to Holland, aye, apparently it's Why? better for them. Because one of them's got what, mental health problems, and it just sits and goes fucking, like, well, it's like, well, I guess it'll be. just like... They're going to be smoking weed and sleeping with prostitutes. Oh, I, so, I, mean, uh, for like, I mean, it's a good way to go out. You know, if you're there off time, mm-hmm. you're just like, you know... We'd, we'd, it'd be a wee gammy T-Rex with no arms or something like the arms aren't great anyway but it'd be a wee fucking yeah uh, <laughs> we Jeremy Beetle <laughs> just, just Jeremy Beetle Rex yeah looking Beetle Rex a Beetle Rex that's um, terrible what are other well known films there's loads of them like Jaws would just be load of fellas out the back of Castle Street <laughs> eating the bacon themselves <laughs> just down, mm-hmm. down Port Rush right everybody out yeah <laughs> <laughs> no there's an eel get the fuck um, <laughs> Jaws what are they show? I can't even think think of other great fi- like good, we're all we're always looking for great films. There must be shite ones too. Oh, there's so many. I do what we love the shite ones on Amazon. Yeah. Have you ever seen Killer Sofa? No. Do you like horror films? Oh yeah. Killer Sofa is is a good one. Do you have to buy it or is it free for no, Prime free. members? It's nice free. to watch it. It's that. like it costs. It'll cost you more <coughs> to watch it, and you're paying nothing than it probably cost them to make it. Yeah. But Killer it's very sofa. good. Watch Killer Sofa. Um, it's about um, like a sofa mm. that kills people. Nice. And you have to be on it or can it move? No, it moves. Wow. And you know what annoys me about that? As somebody who likes to, to you know pitch ideas and try to get things taken off, someone has pitched that mm-hmm. and someone's made it. Yeah. You like Santa the Pedo? It could be one of the base here. You're an aunt's mate. Is this just Pedo? Yeah, it could just be yeah, just the human... Yeah, it's the pedo. Yeah. <laughs> just a hundred. Just loads of pedos, just yeah. A hundred pedos. Just basically, um... And then accidentally, put a, accidentally put a child at the end. Yeah, oh no. 
Do you know what? Like, uh, what else is there? I'm trying to think of other films. Belfast films. What's out at the minute? That's good. Or Eye of the Barbie would just be loads of birds from Sandy Road. Then. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Yeah. Oppenheimer. I don't know. <laughs> just be someone selling fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> fucking pipe bombs. Yeah. Again, Sandy Road. Just to yeah. keep it. See you there. Yes. Pretty much. I know. You know what? Unfortunately for you, you've picked the wrong time to ask this question because we're both tired. Yeah. Our we should, we should have wrapped it off. up 10 minutes ago. We, we should have wrapped it up 10 minutes ago. Listen, mm-hmm. Johnny Bo comedy. Follow him. Buy tickets. He's get, what time's your train at? I don't you even probably know. Probably missed it. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're grand. We're grand though. We're you grand. live here now, don't worry about yeah. it. And Where's your pen? My pen's over there. You're getting me second time your horses. No um, I'll probably not have time to go to the gym. I'll just have to go and pump in my garage. Thanks, thanks for having me. Unbelievable. Thanks for watching. It's Flash fucking idiot. Wreck of my physique. Joy yeah. Bo comedy. It's the worst. What time is it? Unsuitable. 19th? Is it? Yeah, 18th of November. 18th of November. 18th of November, Limelight. 2023 in the Limelight. <clears throat> Get tickets, please, because I just had a wedding and it was fucking expensive. Mm-hmm. Do you find that now that you're married that all your money goes to your wife? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the real world, mate. It's class. Yeah. You know, class. But actually, you know, on that front, you know, are you are you happy being married? Has that yeah. changed? Do you like it? Do you yeah, no, I love it. No, are you just going to keep having holidays? You're moving house around? Yeah, that's the plan. A house and then a dog. That's the plan. Nice. What type of dog are we get? Nice is my shit that I want here. <sighs> Victoria really wants a corgi. There we fat arse things with bad joints. Yeah. Get yourself a retriever, mate. Yeah. It would be bad for you in the suits, to be fair. But yeah. Especially this suit. Yeah. Very black. We get both. Get one. You know what you should do? Mm. Get a retriever. Mm. Get a corgi, breed them, and just kill the first two. And then have like a corgi retriever mix. That could work. Yeah. Unsuitable. 18th of November. Limelight. Ticks available now. Find the link in the video and Thanks. the podcast. I'll Thanks. share the link. Thanks. And you know what? Johnny's a good guy. He has just got married. Stupid bastard. But listen, he's done it. He's joined the team. And support him where you can because life gets a lot harder when you get married, you know. So it does. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming. I just forgot entirely that my hat's around the Fred Durst now. That's fine. I feel like a fool. Yeah, you look great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Keep on rolling. I'll just cut that now. Yeah. I'm the slack guy.